for, for a box. All right, y'all. So, uh, you know, Dennis Ugas got the win over Manny Pacquiao. I already spoke on that. I did a pre-fight, did a post-fight. And, you know, now just looking at it and listening to things that are um, going around and being said. You know, there's a lot of people don't want to give you Dennis Ugas the credit that he deserves. Um, to me, you know, one thing I, I have a serious issue with is when you pick a guy to lose a fight, and then that guy goes out there and gets a win, and then you want to rob credit from the guy and act as if he should have won the fight, that it was never in question, it was never in doubt from the start, and that it was a foregone conclusion before the paperwork, the ink on the paperwork ever got dry. You know, so to me, you know, I feel like, you know, that's just, I mean, that's that's suspect because, you know, it's all get out. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, it's just distasteful. You know what I mean? So, I, that's a lot of what I'm hearing. You know, Manny Pacquiao was old. Manny Pacquiao had cramps. You know, uh, Dennis Ugas was the beneficiary of the late replacement by Errol Spence pulling out of the fight. You know, and, and the thing about it, let, let me touch on the late replacement thing. That goes both ways. You know, um, Dennis Ugas was not training to face Manny Pacquiao. He was training to, to, to essentially be, face a, a, a prospect slash up and coming contender in uh, Fabian Madonna, who hadn't fought anywhere near on that level up to this point. And then he had to switch gears to focus on facing a legend like Manny Pacquiao. You know, give you Dennis Ugas credit. He just handled that like a professional. You know, he just shifted his focus to. You know, from one guy to the other, and, and to be honest, he didn't have much time to prepare. And what he did was he went out there and, 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 and you know what I'm saying, he, he made the most of the moment, and he was determined, and he went out there and got the win. Manny Pacquiao was, you know, training for Errol Spence Jr., who, you know, for, if you poll 100 people, at least, you know, probably 90 of them will say Errol Spence Jr. better than you did in two guys. It's a better fighter. But it's all about, you know, styles. You know, styles make fights. It's all about matchups. And at the end of the day, on fight night, you dance with Ugas with a bad matchup stylistically for Manny Pacquiao. He executed to perfection. He got his he got the job done. Manny Pacquiao, you know, looked good in spots. Manny Pacquiao was very offensive. But Manny Pacquiao's typical defensive holes were there. And it, Dennis Ugas made the most of them. He made the most of them opportunities and openness that he saw before him. You know, for as for Manny Pacquiao five years ago, uh you Dennis Ugas or you know wouldn't have touched him or this guy. You know no, then that's not you know I Shannon Sharp and um Skip Bayless were talking and Shannon Sharp, you know, he, he's giving you Dennis Ugas credit, but taking it away from him at the same time, not knowingly. And saying, you know, things like well this guy wouldn't have touch Manny Pacquiao five years ago. Manny Pacquiao would annihilate this guy five years ago. Well, how about this? Four years ago, Manny Pacquiao was getting abused by Jeff Horn. Um, if you ask, you know, most boxing fans, they probably say it is who guys is a better fighter than Jeff Horn. So, and, and again, it's all about styles and matchups. But if Jeff Horn four years ago was able to do what he did to Manny Pacquiao. If you you brought the Manny Pacquiao from four years ago and dropped him in the ring with your Dennis Ugas the other night, he probably would have got beat just as bad as he did being the Manny Pacquiao that he was on fight night. I mean, that's just. I mean, like I said, and it's it's all speculation anyway because we it's nothing we can prove. But my point is, all of this stuff takes away from the credit that your Dennis Ugas deserves for get, doing what he did. And Dennis Ugas went out there and done a phenomenal job. Um, Manny Pacquiao is Manny Pacquiao, but at the end of the day, all fighters age. And Dennis Ugas is no spring chicken himself. And a lot of people looking at your Dennis Ugas' record at, you know, and basically his losses are at 140. And there's, oh, this guy has these losses, well, so does Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao has more losses than he does. And, and all Manny Pacquiao's losses aren't to aren't two world elite level fighters. And Dennis Ugas never su suffered a knockout loss. 
his losses are close decision losses. I think he has one that was a unanimous decision, but the rest of them are split decision losses. You know, he has a loss to Sean Porter that the world saw him, you know, win the fight. But the politics of boxing didn't allow him to capitalize on the on the job he did in the ring. Because the Errol Spence Jr. and Sean Porter fight was already um, pretty much signed and sealed, just waiting to be delivered. And Dennis Ugas wasn't supposed to go out there and, and dispatch Sean Porter in the manner in which he did. So my whole thing is just give give these fighters credit. When they go out there and get the win, you know, Dennis Ugas didn't ask for the Pacquiao fight to happen, to come to him the way it did, but he had been calling for that fight. He just wasn't a big enough name that Pacquiao was ever going to pay him any attention. Unless he absolutely had to. Pacquiao didn't care enough about that belt to go fight your Dennis Ugas. At this point, Pacquiao, you know, he's big game hunting because he's big game. And he ended up having to fight the guy, you know, that basically got his title. And you know, he saw how it played out. But I just want to give you Dennis Ugas credit. You know what I'm saying? Give Manny Pacquiao his credit for the effort he went in and put out. But I don't want to hear about Manny Pacquiao's calves. And, you know what I'm saying, things like that, it, it is what it is. You, you, you lost, you know what I'm saying, the fans need to accept that the man lost. And, you know, yeah, he's 42 years old, but y'all know he was 42 years old when y'all were picking him to knock the Daniel Super guys out. Y'all know he was 42 years old when y'all were saying he's going to stop Errol Spence Jr. Y'all know he was 42 years old when y'all said that Errol Spence Jr. faked an eye injury because he was afraid of how the Manny Pacquiao fight was going to play out. Now, that same 42-year-old Manny Pacquiao went in there and got washed by a 35-year-old Yudinus Ugas, who was facing his toughest opponent to date, and went out there, you know what I'm saying, and he went out there and, and just got, you know, he just got annihilated. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, he didn't get blown out, but I mean, I mean, yeah, he did. I mean, statistically, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to rounds, he, he got beat pretty handily. Now, he didn't get knocked out. He didn't get dropped, but I mean, he was getting the business. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to give you Dennis Ugas credit. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to Manny Pacquiao next. I wish him the best at whatever he does. And that's a return to the ring. I ask him to tread, tread cautiously. That's all I got to say on it. D-Lo 404 Boxing, like, share, comment, subscribe.